The wicked question, I never thought about it being a, a wicked question, but the wicked question I had taking me back 24, 25 years ago was how do I get out of my own way? I, need to, I, had, I had all this potential. How do I unleash that along the way? So that I can then help others unleash their own potential. So when you see this, and I, this is what you'll get to talk about in your breakout sessions or your reactive sessions. What does the term unleash potential mean to you? What comes to mind? What is the thing you fear the most? To the, I don't remember the, the actress's name, but her answer, she, she, she paused. She says, unfulfilled potential. And you have to think about the people that work in your space. And I'm challenging each of you to think about those people, and it could be you as well, that are walking around in your centers that have potential and you just haven't recognized it or they haven't brought it up. Think about who those people are the rest of this day. When you um, focus on employee engagement, it's profitable. Profitable on the New York Stock Exchange. So there's statistics and dollars out there. It would be profitable in our health centers as well. Uh, we thought about what's our unleashed potential at Johnson Health Center? It could be any health center, any, any, any place. Untapped clinical staff members. Think about it. Never leave your clinical staff members out. You have to bring them into discussion because it's untapped potential. Underutilized millennials. You bring these people in. When I was at Bear Corporation, they put me in charge of the university recruiting program. We, had, we went to the five top universities in the nation, which translated into like the top 2%. You know how difficult it is to keep those guys challenged? We, didn't, we had a terrible retention program, but you got to keep them challenged. Long-term employees. There's people walking around. We heard it yesterday. They may be complaining, and I think Jamie was the one who brought that out, but you got to understand what they're complaining about. Make sure there's, there's merit to it. Volunteers, look at your volunteers. We did. Clerical employees, board members. Make sure your board members get involved if they're not. There's ways to use them. You just gotta inspire them so you influence them, you get what you want. Community partners and even <laughs> the walking dead. You got a few of them walking around. How can you use them? Maybe you kick them out. That's unleashing your potential. <laughs> On the innovative staff for us, what it did for us, it increased our patient access. We've grown year over year. It's been the second fastest growing health center in the state. All it's been organic, through no grants. Improved quality and compliance, patient transportation. We have a van we drive around town. Now, this is the best marketing tool you can ever imagine. I thought we had three of them. This guy drives it around. I mean, I see him everywhere. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> He's transporting. I don't know how this works. <laughs> our patient satisfaction rate, which was deemed a first of best practice at our OSV last May, which received a perfect score thanks to this great team, was our patient satisfaction rate. Thank you. Look at Gary Campbell doing that. Gary Campbell's got a great team. We use branding as our recruitment engine. Combine the two. We, have a, we, we incorporated and partnered with a, a video marketing group in town, and now we uh, people want to see those, they want to see videos, they want to see how you live, that's how we do it. And finally, we did a rewards and recognition program that was centered on communication and a lot of peer-to-peer -peer stuff that doesn't cost a lot of money. And it has been wildly successful, still is, but it is, it's about unleashing that potential, getting people involved. Keys to success, we lived our core values. And we never leave the culture on cruise control, never do it, not even where you sit. We surround ourselves with the right people and move others out. We led with impact by building and nurturing our relationships. We're passionate about what we do. And we drive innovation and core values. And data. Data, data, data. You gotta have good data. That helps build the trust. Impact, destiny, and legacy. I soul searched this myself. For me personally. And then I thought, wow, this is great. At least it is for me. I hope it is for you. How do you make an impact? Well, number one, you're here today. You're making an impact because you're investing in yourself to see what do we do different. What do we do better? Who do we get to know? At the top of the chain, there's no one live your core values. Know what your core values are. Know what's important to you if you haven't thought about it. Strive to positively make a difference in someone else's life. Okay? 
be a mentor, role model, encourager, all while putting other people first. Take ownership in the role you play in work and life. Be accountable for your actions. Don't point the finger, no matter how bad it is. Be accountable. Control what you can control. Remember what I said earlier, you're not going to be in a situation every time when you run the show. Your future success. High performing organizations, which you all work at, will have a clearly defined vision and leaders who are trustworthy, inspirational, and empathetic. These will be you. These are you. Remember, you're not making an impact unless you're traveling the road of adversity. Take it all in and embrace the journey while changing lives and building your legacy.